Welcome back everyone. This is updated video on my mag. There are many things to prepare and test for making this video due to new added weapons and game system. Even so, this video still may not cover all the weapons, synergies and other explanations. I suppose you already know the basic, then I want to keep it simple and short. Please keep in mind, my builds are focused and optimized for solo game play. If you are going to use it on squad, it will be better, or you may want to tweak a little to suit your needs. So, without further ado, let's get to the builds. First build is for casual game play. You can use any helmet ability to increase the damage, such as Mirage's Eclipse, Rhino's Roar, Zaku's Zada's Whisper, or others. For the Arcane it depends on the focus school and weapon you will use, but in my case, I prefer using Xenuric Energizing Dash. For the weapons, you can use whatever you like. For this loadout, my Redeemer Prime is just for cosmetics, so I suggest bring Vastalok to strip enemy armor and the rest, I prefer using Kuva Chakar and Kachmoon Kitgun as secondary. Second build is Ivara Quiver. This loadout is intended for long survival using guns as main DPS. For gameplay, you need to actively casting Cloak Arrow on the ground to stay invisible. While switching and using every weapon you have to kill enemies. For the weapons, I prefer using Alternate Fire Queller which have infinite body punch through within 18 meters range. Highest single elemental damage is possible, and by using Tactical Reload, we will not have to reload this weapon while we switching between weapons. As for Arcane, I think it's safe using Primary Deadhead for longer buff duration and headshot multiplier, but also, you can choose Dexterity or Merciless instead. For the secondary, it's up to you, but I prefer using critical build Zymos, even though most of the time we unable to land headshot, especially when the first enemy trapped inside bubble die. And for the melee, I just use it for killing Acolyte or help striping enemy armor from distance using Vastalok. Next build is Cold Elemental Ward. The idea came from other YouTube channel called Dystopia. You can watch his video for detailed explanation, and I will link his video in the description below. This build is intended for disruption mission, very fast single target kill, but not group of enemies. It's because when multiple enemies trapped inside the bubble, then, after the first target is killed, others will most likely get the body shot instead of headshot. Not recommended to run this mission solo, but if you do, more energy efficiency and huge energy pools is necessary, since the enemy is few, and we rarely kill them. Even so, I still need to use energy pad. If you're running with squad, you can swap one of these with vigorous swap. For the main DPS, mainly I'm using secondary weapon. You can use whatever you like, but unfortunately, not many weapons working with this synergy. In my case, I prefer Ratligat's kit gun. Secondary Deadhead for more headshot bonus and long buff duration, also packs charge for infinite ammo. I'm not using Galvanized Shot in this gun, since I think it's not working and also, we're not proc many status effects on enemies. For the primary, I'm using Ferox with long status duration radiation. It's very useful to trap and make them busy in one spot, so, they will not interfere with us to trap and kill Demolist alone. And for the melee, I'm using Vastalok with pure cold or corrosive cold status to strip enemy armor fast and make the Demolist run slower. Next build is Breaching Surge Wisp. This build works great with gas status effect, which causing the surge sparks chaining between targets inside the bubble. The gameplay is often using her ability to regain shield, actively spam Breaching Surge to CC them, and then keep trapping nearby enemies inside the bubble. If another bubble is in explosion range to others, the damage will be stored, if the enemy still inside and alive to receive the damage, thus this will be adding the damage to the next bubble explosion. If you successfully keep doing that, the explosion damage will be absurdly huge. I'm mainly using melee weapon, and you can use whatever you like. In my case, I tested it with Tenet Agendas and Grigori. The heavy attack Tenet Grigori works better than Tenet Agendas, but Tenet Grigori heavy attack is harder to use it. I recommend to use gas or electric, or both in your melee. For the primary and secondary, I'm using Seto and Zakti Prime to deal as many status effects as possible to the enemies inside the bubble. 
Next build is Sickening Pulse. This build is synergies well with gas and electric status effects alongside with mag bubble to trap close enemies together. If we can deal one huge gas damage to the enemy, then we can multiply it 10 times with single pulse, and for electric status effects, it will be much more as long the status duration not expired. You can use any weapon you like, as long it modded with gas or electric status effects or both. For example, my secondary is for utility, to debuff and adding more status type for primary or melee weapon. Some weapons capable of killing the enemies faster before I cast a pulse, even without adding lots of status effects first for condition overload, which is great. These are some samples, how good the weapon combination could be, even the arcane buff for primary weapons and combo count for melee weapons still not active yet. There are still many weapon that could be use, such as the Tenet and Kuva weapons with electric bonus damage with exception for Tenet agendas, you can pick heat or toxin bonus damage for this weapon. Za melee with full status or hybrid build. CD Lacera, Oma and Rumblejack dagger which have innate electric damage. I will not show it all now, because I've show you the sample, how to mod them all. The last build for her is Atlas Petrify. This build is intended for long survival mission. Not only the enemies dropping extra loot for energy orbs and life support, but also, if they are in stone form, they will get extra 50% damage vulnerability from all damage type, but capped to 100% maximum. For the weapon, you can use any weapon you like. Just like I've show you before, using gas, electric or both status effects would be great. In my case, I'm using Electric Strip Vastalok as main DPS, while Primary Cedo and Zacti Prime to proc lots of status effects, and also dealing damage over time. Even though when I tested it, I'm using Toxin on my Vastalok. I'm still killing enemies effectively. But if you're using Electric, it will better. For Focus School, I've already show you on my loadouts. Most of the time, I'm using Vazarin for extra survivability, and Zenuric when I'm using Wisp Breaching Surge, and for heavy attack efficiency. And for the Operator Arcane, Magus Lockdown and Anomaly is my choice, but for Disruption, only Magus Lockdown is necessary. The companion I'm use is mostly Panzer Vulpafilla for spreading viral status effects across the enemies, and also extra protection. And the second choice is Jin, if you plan to boost more critical chance using Vigilante mod sets for primary weapons such as Phantasma. Quick tips to play with her synergy. Basically, explosions and punch through projectile weapons are working well with her magnetized bubble, but not all of it considered good. By casting more than one bubble in the range of explosion radius to each other will also increasing the next bubble explosion damage if the enemy still alive inside it to receive the damage. Keep spamming her ability to regain shield if you prefer active gameplay and open areas, and more CC ability such as breaching surge is needed to reduce enemy gunfire. Or, alternatively, staying on the edge of the map could make your gameplay easier if you can kill the enemy fast or by using extra ability like Atlas Petrify, especially in survival mission. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and see you again next time.